There we go. We're recording. So welcome, everybody. This is our second call of Coach Basics, and we're going to talk tonight about inviting and objections and all that kind of good stuff, because one of our goals for the week ahead um, is to get everybody kind of started. So, um, so Terry's going to do some talking tonight, and then we'll certainly open it up to discussion and questions and all that, too. But take it away. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Hi. Terry. I met most of you via Zoom before, so. Um, okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about inviting. Um, I, I feel it's by far the most important part of the business, really. Um, it's the one way you are sure to grow your customer base. Um, it, it helps kind of getting yourself out there. You know, the more people you invite, the more people um, will know, you know what you're doing and what you're promoting and, you know, understand that, you know, what you're doing is actually um, not just a hobby, but, you know, for some of us, it, it's our job um, and, and your goal, you know, to helping as many people as you can. So it's, it's really important, you know, Beachbody, and, um, you know, just kind of the way that we were taught um, at the beginning is just to try to invite, you know, a few people every day. So they say, you know, maybe whatever, five people a day. Um, sometimes some people do that. Some people invite two people a day. Some people save their invitations for the weekend. Um, I personally, I don't do it during in the week, I sort of like saving it all for, um, this is sad, but for Friday night, <laughs> if I don't have anything going on, or Friday during the day, um, I'll try to, you know, before we go out or whatever, if we're going out to eat or something, I'll try to set up my invitations that, that night, and I'll usually invite you know, anywhere between like 10 to 15 people. Um, I just sort of feel sometimes it's it helps to do it right before a weekend because <clears throat> unlike, you know, us who happen to be on Facebook a lot with the business, not many people are during the week. And usually if they're going to check in, it's going to be over the weekend. Um, and so if my message is in there, they'll see it hopefully and respond to me before the next week begins. So that's just what I do, but many other people do, you know, different things um, and kind of spread it out throughout the week. Um, and so I feel like the for us, and I, I know Shannon and Nadine and I were talking not too long ago, well, Shannon and I were, you know, when we first started out, we sort of had this anxiety about inviting, and I feel like everybody sort of does. Um, and and we've learned over time and the more practice we've had, you know, now it's just kind of old hat and it, it, it really, you know, and I think there are some steps that need to be taken to get to that point. So the quicker you kind of get out there and start inviting, the better. Um, you know, what I would say is just to be confident, you know, don't be apologetic or don't think, you know, in that way when you're inviting somebody, you know, be bold, be brave. You're offering them a solution, you know, to getting themselves healthy. It's not like you're telling them to go jump off a cliff or any, you know, this is something that's amazing and it's done amazing things for you. So you're getting out there and trying to help them. Um, so kind of get rid of the apprehension, you know, from the beginning, you know, don't think like, oh, they're going to think it's too much money or gosh, they already have a Y membership. They're not going to want to do this. Like try to get those things out of your head. Um, because you never know, you know, um, and, you know, and, and, you know, and so sometimes like for me, inviting people even to the coaching opportunity, I'm like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to like this. And again, I have to remind myself, you know, that's kind of my next stepping stone to try to get over that. You know, I have to believe I'm going to help change their financial future. You know, not only are they helping other people, but they're also, you know, I can help them with, you know, their finances. Um, in the future. So, um, a couple people, and I, I don't personally do this, but I, I, I sort of, you know, kind of take what I've heard and listen to and whatever. But, um, some people even say like, before you sit down to invite, open up a personal development book and read for like 10 minutes 
And sometimes that can just kind of give you that confidence to just go and like get rid of all your reservations and get after it. So um, that's my little spiel on that. Now, if we kind of move over to like who to invite, how do I start, what do I do? Uh, and I know we've talked about this a little bit. Um, first and foremost, you need a list. Have a list, have a list that you keep adding to, whether it's on a piece of paper. Um, what I, I do every month, this is so not like tech savvy, but I print out this little, this is the um, customer follow-up tracker. So every month I put like the month on the top and you know, anytime I have somebody who buys a challenge pack or whatever, I put that here, the date and everything so I can contact them. But then on the back of this, I also put, um, this is, I don't even know if you can see this. This is my list for this month. Like all these people that I would like to invite um, and I'll keep adding to it. But I put this list and I save all these every month. And as I go and invite, I put little check marks by and I literally just write like if they commented or whatever, um, I should probably move to putting it all in the computer. <laughs> And I need to do a better job of tracking. But for me, like, I can see everything. I know who I invited. I know who I didn't. And I do it that way. Um, and then what I also do is on, this is, this is bad, you know, but here's me. Okay. This is what I do on the back. And I put every challenge group we have, um, including like Coach Basics, the free group. And anytime somebody says they want to be in a group or whatever, if you know somebody just like my free group people I put them all on so I put them on the back and then I know what groups are coming up who I want to invite to these groups and what I should invite so that's just my system and I I'm sure it'll change over time and it's changed you know since I started but I do have that list every month but I also have this master list it's in my computer but I just kind of pick from it um, here and there and and randomly throughout you know I mean I'll go to like my son's basketball game and talk to a parent who I haven't even thought of that person's name will go on my list and it's not like I'm going to invite them the next day because I sort of just try to you know build some type of relationship if I see him again you know maybe we'll talk about what we're what we do and you know eventually that person's on my list I don't necessarily invite them then but you know you know what I'm trying to say um, just keep adding to it daily so you know start with your warm market your your friends your family your neighbors I mean they're good people to even practice on um, I know when I started I simply I wrote up and I'm going to show this to you now um, I wrote up a, a letter and I sent it to all of my close friends when I started this business, hold on, let me screen share. I can't talk and do this at the same time. <laughs> okay, screen share. Okay, um, let me go, where is it? Let me move this little black thing here. Okay, so this is what I did when I first invited my friends. Um, I kind of just told them, you know, I've recently started this new endeavor as a beach body coach. I've been inviting a few families and friends to my challenge group, which started whenever. And I thought of you, let me know what you think. And I just kind of gave them my story and how I got started and why I love what I do. And, and I really just finished a challenge group. So it wasn't like, you know, I was an expert in anything. Um, and I invited them to join. I asked them to, um, even before I did this, I, I sort of asked some friends to look over some videos for me to see like, you know, if, if I were to invite people to, you know, join in this endeavor with me, to jump into a challenge group with me, which of these videos do you think would speak to you more and would want you to sort of jump in and join with me? So I put um, the Ever Feel Like This video, which kind of just talks, it, it's a great video just kind of showing what a challenge group looks like online through Facebook, how you do it, how you pick a program. Um, that seemed to be one of the better videos that my friends liked. And then the Shakeology video on why you, why you drink it. Um, so I sent this, and this is long, like, <laughs> it's probably not recommended, but for me, I had such a hard time just being like at the beginning 
hey, I'm starting a challenge group, join in with me, um, that I just felt like I needed to share a little bit more. And it worked. I mean, there were some people who were like, eh, you know, of course you get objections. Um, and, and initially those were like, you know, a little heart, heart wrenching. <laughs> like, why don't you want to do this? It's the greatest thing ever. I can't even believe you're saying no. Um, but again, we'll talk later. Those people that said, no, I'm not kidding you. If not all of them, if I tracked better, I would know. But most of them have joined and come back and have said yes. So um, it happens. You can ask anybody who's been in it for a while. The no's typically turn to yeses. Um, so then I got a little bit shorter in my invites here, you can see. Um, this was just for a specific, you know, invitation. What I'm doing, getting ready, you know, I think it was, oh yeah, uh, like a winter workout. And, and here I just added some testimonies that I had on my website to kind of show people, you know, what other people have experienced in this. And I just copy and pasted this to whatever, 15 people that I thought would want to be in a winter challenge, sent it out, and, you know, they responded. And when they responded, I then told them a little bit more about what a challenge group is. You know, if they asked about Shakeology, I would tell them that. So um, <clears throat> this became, you know, another type of invitation. I'm just going to go through kind of some of these invitations. <clears throat> um, and I think I do have, a, you know, a couple from um, Shannon and um, Kathleen are in here too. So this is like an old teammate that I had. So you kind of have to tailor your invites to who you're inviting and what you're inviting to. So this is a teammate, you know, and I invited some of my teammates who were, you know, athletes who have been through, you know, tough training to do some of the, you know, more extreme workouts. So I would, I, I would invite them to something, you know, like the Insanity Max 30 or P90X3. Um, this invitation I invited, actually Jeannie's not on the call right now, but this is the exact invitation I invited Jeannie to um, in one of our, for a challenge. It was that kind of that same one. You know, I put in testimonials in the beginning, you know, just a little bit of small talk. I heard about your dog. I'm so sad, you know, whatever she, her dog was really um, sick and not doing well. Um, and so I invited her to the challenge. She said, yes, she's now like a rock star coach. You know, I mean, little thing. I, and, and to be honest, I didn't, I didn't know if she would want to join a challenge. You know, I knew she had something wrong with her foot and I wasn't sure. So really you never know. Um, let's see, let me just go down here. These are just, you know, I'm going to take you to, this was one of Nadine's invites you know are you looking to slim down and get healthy this summer i'm looking for 10 women that would like to lose 8 to 20 pounds and want to participate in a slim down challenge she posted this on her facebook page um kind of told them what they were going to get what they were going to do comment below to be considered for the group um this is one of kathleen's invites um you know sometimes you kind of have to get into what you know, what your audience or what a specific person likes. And, and she happened to have a conversation um, or reach out to somebody who she knew was into Tough Mudders um, and half marathons, you know, athlete, somebody who, and kind of talked about that, you know. Um, I've seen your post about Tough Mudders and half marathons. And then she went into just kind of describing P90X3 and how she thought it would be a great program he might like to try. Um, so again, you know, just kind of a different thing. Um, this is for a oh, program specific for people who have gym memberships, which I knew a lot of, um, and some runners and I invited them to a Pio challenge group and kind of explained why I thought it would be good for somebody like that to join. So again, I just kind of tailored that a little differently. Um, okay. I'm trying to get to the do, do, do. Sorry. Okay. So this is another, and this is, we have all of these, I believe it's in Inspiration Nation, um, but this is the five step invitation process. And if you haven't seen this, um, this is something else you can start with as well. Um, and I think it's something that we all refer to. And sometimes I even go back to this and change whatever I was doing before and just 
try this because, um, you know, sometimes it just seems like a great, you know, option. So, you know, initial invite, reaching out, um, real short and simple. You know, I'm starting a 90 day fitness challenge. Ours are typically 30 or 60, what, whatever. Um, I have space for just a few more people. I wanted to talk to you first and see if you wanted to join before I talk to anyone else. Do you have any interest? And stop. Sometimes I have a hard time doing that, but you know, and they're saying, you know, the first message, you really don't want to vomit all over them and, you know, give them everything, you know, um, the best thing, and this is what I've started to get into is really, you know, if somebody decides and says that they're interested, but they want to hear more, um, you need to sort of get into their why, you know, you need to figure out from them what they're interested in why they would be interested. Um, and then it, it even goes into, let me see if this is on here, where those questions are. Maybe that's a different, oh, right here. Um, I've used this a lot, okay? And even, I think Kathleen, you gave this to us. You know, tell me a little bit about yourself. Do you have kids? Are you married? Do you work? You know, picking some of these questions to sort of get to know them, especially if they're people you don't necessarily, you, you're not close with, you know, you haven't talked to in so many years. Um, with friends and family, obviously you don't have to do this, but once you kind of get out of that warm market or you're, you know, these, these questions are really important and not only that, but they sort of help, um, your, the person you're talking to sort of, you develop this trust with them. Like you're not just throwing out, you know, trying to get them to purchase anything or buy anything or join your challenge group. You are showing them you genuinely want to know you know, how you can help them, you know, what they need, what's been working for them, you know, maybe, and it will help you figure out perhaps what program is right for them. And, and, um, you know, even the nutrition aspect, you know, some, sometimes I wouldn't even ask anybody like, how's your nutrition? Um, that's all you have to really say. And they just start spilling things, you know, like, oh gosh, I'm horrible. You know, I drink Diet Coke all the time. I need to stop, whatever. But you know, little questions like this help them sort of get to their why and make them realize as well that they might need this. Um, so ask questions. Don't sort of, you know, throw everything out there at once. Um, I'm going to show you real quick here. Whoop. See, this is a lot of reading. Hold on. Let me just get to... Um, Um, whoop, nope, that's not it. Okay, I'll flip it around. Um, let me just go off here. So really, oh, that's what I wanted to show you. Warm market you can start with. And, you know, the invitation process goes, and sometimes it's just sort of your way of um, figuring out, you know, what they need, what they want. And then, you know, after they kind of share those things with you, then you can sort of go into what a challenge group is, um, you know, what you do, how you help them. And I know we have different, um, and I'll get to that. I can't find where my thing is right now. Hold on. Do, do, do. I'm going to do this really quick. Sorry, I have to look at my screen here. Um, okay. I just wanted to show you this really fast too. So after I kind of figure out what, what they want, what they need, um, I tell them this. And, and I give, I've given this to a couple of my coaches as well. Um, so, you know, after they tell me, yes, I want to join, I need a little bit more, I explain what a challenge group is. I help you choose the best speech buddy workout. Everything's done on DVDs. I ask everybody to replace one meal a day with Shakeology. I just say that. I don't say you know, do you want to try Shakeology? I just say it. Um, and then that's it. You know, does this sound like something you'd like? Sometimes I add this as well, you know, throughout the challenge, this is what we do. Um, give you sample meal plans, whatever. Um, oh yeah. Is this something you like to do? If they say yes, then I give them ordering directions, tell them when to start. We go. If they want to know more about Shakeology, then I insert this part. And this is just sort of my, a little spiel, and I think I actually got this from Kathleen. <laughs> um, 
maybe all of this. I don't even remember. It's been so long. <laughs> but um, so you just kind of talks about Shakeology and the benefits of it. Um, and sometimes now that I have a blog and I have more things on there, I'll direct them there. But that's kind of my whole invitation process. And again, it's probably different from what Kathleen does or, or what you might do or what Shannon does. But I just kind of wanted to just throw some options out there. We have a whole file full of different types of invitations that you can look through and sort through as you wish. Um, so I wanted to kind of show you this too. And I know, and I'm not sure if you know about this, but if you go to your Facebook homepage, and, and this is more of, you know, trying to build relationships with people before you just go out and do a cold invite. So, you know, there are times to do cold invites, you know, when, when you're just kind of like, hey, this is what we're doing. If you want to join, join. Um, but I also feel, and I, I think we would all agree that we're in this relationship business and you want to sort of make connections with people before, you know, inviting them to something. So, um, you want to make sure, you know, study Facebook. You know, if you're on Facebook, there's so many people out there, you know, friends of friends, whatever. Um, what I've done, and, and I know some of us have tried, if you go to your Facebook homepage and go to your friends right here, okay, click on more, there's a way for you to group friends because, you know, in our news feed, not everybody is going to see your general posts about a challenge group. You can't really rely on that, um, you know, people seeing it and being like, oh yeah, I wanna join, because not everybody sees your posts. You know, it, it, there's only so many people that will actually see it. Um, and even for you, when you go on your newsfeed, you don't see all of your friends, all of your family, all of their posts, you know, there's just so much. So what I've done and what other people I know have done is organize groups of people um, in these little friend categories. So Facebook does some for you, like family and close friends, I think. I don't know how they know these things, but they do. And they group them for you. But what I've done also is, you know, I put in some of the top beach buddy coaches that I like to follow and look at. I put all of our Inspiration Nation coaches and my team's coaches in a file. So that, because sometimes I don't even see half of the things that our team posts because there's so much in the news feed. So this way I can see that now in terms of inviting and, and finding people and, you know, trying to make relationships with your people, um, potential customers, you can make a group for that. So I put in here Beachbody Potentials, okay? These are all people who either are on my list or could be on my list or may one day I may invite, and I put them in a group. And when I click on this, all of their news, everything pops up, okay? And everybody's news feed comes up, and I can go through and, you know, just sort of comment or like or see what people are up to, what they're doing, whatever, it's really easy to make one of these groups. Um, all you have to do is create a list, make the list name, and then you know once you start adding people, um, whatever. Once you start adding people, like I can put Shannon, her name pops up, I click it, she's in it, okay? So you can put whoever you want, and then when you click on this list, everybody comes up and you can kind of sort through. So I just kind of wanted to show you that really quickly. Um, how do I stop my screen sharing? Hold on. I lost that. Stop share. Okay. I'm going to share in a minute again because I have a funny little video here. Okay. So I kind of wanted to give you that. Um, let me just look back on my notes here and see if I forgot anything. So I guess in terms of like the people that you don't really know, uh, spending like three or four days sort of commenting or pre-liking just to sort of build that relationship before you kind of go in and ask somebody out of the blue, you know, to join a challenge group, you know, make sure you sort of have some sort of relationship established. Um, and definitely, um, you know, I would say not only does that help, you with their relationship, but it also helps you with that, with the like Facebook affinity. You know what I'm talking about? Um, it grows more if you post and comment on other people's things. You know, more people will start seeing your stuff 
and you'll start seeing you know different people's posts in your news feed I found when I wasn't doing that my some of my posts were getting like 22 people you know 22 views or whatever and then when I started to kind of get in on other people's stuff and really take time to see what's going on in everybody else's life um, that went up and and I was seeing comments from people that I haven't heard to in a while heard from in a while and it was like oh you are here yay it's so nice to hear from you whatever so um, just kind of make sure you're genuine you know build the relationship um, you know create lists you know if you have a free group and I just did this and I, I think I learned this from Kathleen but um, you know, she had a free group that was really successful a few months ago and there were like 300 some people in it and she made one of those little group lists on Facebook and put all of those free group people in there and was able to sort of keep track of them and you know see what they were doing and whatnot so I just decided to do that for this free clean eating group put all the people that are in it that um, you know that I didn't necessarily know who just maybe friended me so I can kind of get to know them a little bit more and 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 see what they're up to what they like and whatnot so it's a great way to sort of build relationships um, and, and really the more you reach out and invite obviously the less objectives you'll get if, if you sort of have more of established something with that person um, so there is that whole thing of sending messages there's that whole way of you know posting little posts on Facebook I have a challenge group join I'd love to have you those things all work wonderful. Um, there's also, you know, if, if you're reaching out to somebody and they're not quite sure, if you just say, hey, like, let's get on the phone. I'll tell you about it. Talking to somebody, I, I sometimes I think because we're so, like, trapped in this Facebook world, um, actually, like, having a phone conversation is so much more beneficial um, than trying to message back and forth. So if you can do that in any way, um, I say do it. I mean, I think, you know, if they can hear that passion in your voice of what you experienced and how you felt, you know, during your challenge and just, you know, how much you believe in what you're doing, um, it's, it'll seal the deal. You know what I mean? They're, they're going to hear it and they're going to trust you and believe you and want you to do that. Um, so I've been trying to do that a little bit more now. It, it's harder because I just, my schedule does not allow for me to have too many phone conversations um, unless they want to hear my children in the background but um, but I have done that and I felt so much better afterwards because it was like ah oh, you know I find I kind of got the it out there by speaking to somebody so that's another way to kind of reach out and, and build that relationship um, and I wanted to show you this because I think this is a unique way to invite. Um, and I'm going to share, I'm going to show a really quick video. It's maybe like a minute, but there's a coach, his name's Caleb Thomas, and he is um, a beach buddy coach here in Pittsburgh. He's on the dream team, I believe, isn't he? He's on our team. Um, let me just screen share. And he actually invites, I think he does all of his invitations through voice recordings. And I just think it's genius and real, I might start trying it um, and really just kind of neat. So let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, he kind of talks about inviting in this video and, and I'll post this video in um, our Coach Basics group if you want to watch the whole thing, but I was just going to kind of get to the part where he talks about this voice recording and how he invites. Can you all see this? Yeah, okay. Uh, hold on. Back here. Okay. Just listen real quick. Are you serious? You must add value to them. You have to give them something. Oh, wait. I got to go a little further. Oh, my He's eyes hysterical, up. by the way. Yes, <laughs> his videos. Are I so actually fun. use an app, and I hope it doesn't stop recording when I get out of this app. I'm using my GoPro here, but okay, we're still recording. So I actually go on Facebook on my phone, my iPhone, and I get into the messages, and I go to messages and I type in Jill because that's who I'm going to be inviting. And there's a little paper clip on the left side, and I click on that. And I'm a fan of making my invitations as personal as possible, absolutely personal as possible. So I actually do my invitations 
via voice recording. And I do that for a couple of reasons. First off, first off, they hear my voice. They know that I am actually talking to them. They see that I'm not just copy pasting an invitation. Whatever works for you works for you, but this is just how I do it, okay? And um, I get on here, I, I go to the voice recording part. See, there's actually a voice recording. I don't know if it's focused or not. But um, I, I, I have my background now. I look at, actually just got a message back from one of my previous invitations. Check that out. It works. Um, okay, so I have a compliment that I can give her. I want to talk to, I want to tell her that I love her blog. It's awesome. Add value to her. I go in here and I'm going to actually give you my invitation right now. Now, I keep it simple. I keep it as simple as possible and I try and keep as consistent as possible. So what I did was I actually, I literally typed out a script that I try to follow every single time that I invite. So I cover all the details. I don't give them too much. I give them a little bit and it's, it's focused and it's um, to the point and it doesn't let me just like go crazy. Another thing that keeps it in line for me is the messaging, the voice recording only allows me to do 60 seconds. So it's 60 seconds, invitation, done. I don't, I don't take up a lot of their time. I'm not super intrusive, I'm not intrusive at all. And it gets the word out and I can move on to the next person and invite the next person, okay? So I'm going to actually press the record button now and invite Jill Thomas, here we go. Hey Jill, it's Caleb. Um, I actually was just going on Facebook and I came across your blog. I just wanted to say your blog is one of the funnest blogs I've seen in a long time. I saw that, that picture of dad's report card and oh my gosh, I cannot believe that he got the ratings that he got and the uh, teacher said what he said anyway. But anyway, I just wanted to let you know your blog is great. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing an awesome job. I love reading it. But uh, anyways, I'm not sure if you've seen any of the Facebook posts that I've been putting on lately as a coach, but I'm actually starting another 90 day health and fitness support group here on Facebook. And I have just a couple more spots open. Um, I wanted to extend the offer to give you one of those spots if you wanted the opportunity. And it's perfect for people that are interested in losing weight, toning up, getting healthy, eating cleaner, getting ready for the summer, all that good stuff. So let me know if this is something you'd be interested in and I'd be happy to give you more details. So, uh, um, I hope to hear back from you soon and I hope you're doing well. Love the blog and have a great night. Okay, so that's just an example of a little voice recording, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and it seems to be working very well for him. I haven't tried it yet, uh, but I may give it a try. I know you can also like and I think he's using a voice recording app and then sending it, but I know you can also do voice messages through Facebook, but I know you can't like, once you say something, you can't like take it back. You know what I mean? So if you mess up <laughs> and send it there, it's done. Um, so I'm not, I haven't perfected that at all. I've just tried it a little like with my husband. So I have to figure out the best way to do it. But um, so again, another option to invite, um, and even obviously face to face, great too. Um, so that's kind of, I don't know, do you, the inviting part, I was going to kind of move into objections next, but Kathleen or Shannon, do you have anything to add to the inviting part before we move into that? I do. Of course I do. I always have something to add. I feel like. <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, so like Terry said in the beginning, I was extremely scared to invite. Um, number one, it was very hard for me to jump out of my comfort zone and invite people that I haven't spoken to in years or even just to simply reach out to them and um, talk to somebody and like I haven't spoken to or maybe even never spoken to. Um, and I just remember Kathleen always telling me, she's like, just contact the people from high school. What do you've got to lose? And it just, she said that to me like three or four times and I'm like, Gosh, and I wasn't really close to anybody. Like, I didn't have a lot of friends in high school or whatever. So I finally did it, and I, I jumped out of my comfort zone, and it just made me that much more confident when people started um, messaging me back because they noticed my posts, and um, they were telling me I was an inspiration. And so as hard as it is in the beginning to send out that first message, 
it's just so important um, to start building those relationships with people that you haven't, because believe me, if you're doing what we're telling you and posting three to five times a day and sharing your story, they're watching. Um, so it just, you know, take that first step and just, it just, just do it. Just say, hi, how are you? You know, whatever, whatever it is. The other thing that I've noticed along the way, this actually over the last few months is, you know, invite, invite, invite every call, invite, invite, invite the three vital behaviors. You know, they say, if you don't invite, 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 you're not going to grow your business. They're absolutely right. I've been consistently, consistently doing that over the last few months with coaching and my challenge groups and my business has skyrocketed. So it's so important just to take in everything that Terry is telling you today, because honestly, I've seen a huge difference um, in inviting. So I just, oh, and also very, the, the first message is just to catch their attention. Don't put like a whole big story in, just something um, short and sweet about inviting to a challenge group, just like, you know, that first step in the invitation process. Um, because if you do more than that, you'll lose them because I, I was actually telling Kathleen, I just recently got an invitation to a, what was that Kathleen? Now I forgot. It was tastefully simple or one of those home shows she wanted. She was um, asking if I would have like a show for her at my, my house or whatever. And honestly, her invite was so long. I stopped reading after like the third sentence, like, I, it, it was just ridiculous. <laughs> so again, that it, initial invite should just be short, sweet to the point. Uh, and then, you know, as when they message you back, if they're interested in learning information, then, you know, it's so important, like Terry said, to talk about their why. I don't talk about Beachbody product, you know, products or Shakeology until the very end, because it's so key to focus on what their goals are, you know, why they're doing this. Um, and most often it's, they're feeling terrible about themselves and they just want to feel better and they want to look better and, um, to find out that why. So, because you want to have that connection with them. And, uh, so that's it. I'm sorry. Okay. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I'll just add my two cents too. I, I was, I, I mean, I felt exactly the same in the beginning, the anxiety about, I literally went out and bought a t-shirt that says just do it because I just couldn't get myself like. I don't know, like going from having a hundred friends on Facebook to trying to make relationships and stuff like that. For me, it was very difficult in the beginning. And even posting is still not my favorite thing to do on Facebook. If any of you are watching me for that, I just, it's not my, it's way out of my comfort zone. So I did a lot of the private messaging and I still do to connect with people because that's just my, my who I am. It's my stronger area. So I have to go with that. Um, but yeah, and, and I think, I, I think as Terry moves into objections, I was just thinking about this because um, I was just helping out a new mom and I was giving her some resources for, you know, new, we're all moms here, right? So newborns, like the thing is that they're going to cry <laughs> and um, that's the same. I mean, I think it's kind of parallel. It's a good metaphor for our business. Like we're going to send out these invitations and we're going to get objections. We just are because you're, you're dealing with um, very touchy, vulnerable topics. People's weight is very hard and pe being in shape, it's very difficult to talk about it, it. Even if you're in the best shape, we're women and we are always, you know, critical of ourselves and our bodies and it's just all over the media. So anyway, so the bottom line is you're going to get them. And I think just having the tools that I know Terry's going to talk about and we'll continue to talk about it, but having tools in your pocket to have it not, like Terry was saying, not be a jab in your <laughs> your self-esteem if somebody says no because it, it really is um something that every single person in this business deals with and in all business um but just having resources in your pocket will help you not feel like you, you can almost expect there not almost you can expect there to be um objections but if you have resources for what to do so you're not stopped in your tracks at an objection but rather you know you can either push through to help them see the value in it or you can, you know, continue on with inviting more people or whatever. But anyway, just, I think it's important to know that we all felt some anxiety in the beginning because it's a new, it's a new skill. It's something unlike, I think most of us have to do in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, but anyway, on we go. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Okay. With that, I'm going to move into one more quick video because I just think it's funny and we all have felt this way. So. 
Real quick, Caleb's back. <laughs> this is Coach Caleb from EpicMBRec.com. Who's got a fear of rejection? What happens in your mind when somebody tells you no? <laughs> I must be a terrible person. I want to help you on this. You see, I've been told no, ignored, defriended, blocked, reported as spam, and totally rejected by my best friends and some of my closest family members countless times. But despite that, I'm still growing a thriving business at a ridiculously fast rate with a ton of really amazing people. And the only reason I'm able to do that and other people aren't is because I made the decision to get over the irrational fear of hearing the word no. Honestly, folks, I get more no's than I can even keep track of. You see, somewhere along the road, we trained ourselves to believe that hearing the word no is as horrible as dying. <clears throat> Don't do it! That short-term, uncomfortable feeling of rejection is to be avoided at any and all costs, including giving up the opportunity of building our long-term dreams. Just, just stop for a second. Try to think rationally about this right now. Is that an even trade? Should you really give up your life dreams because you're afraid of hearing the word no? Instead of looking at rejection and the word no negatively like most average people do, think about it in a positive way. First of all, we should not be afraid of asking people how we can help them. We should be proud and excited to do that, regardless of the outcome. Second, if you're getting no's, it means you're talking to people about your cause, and that is amazing. The world needs more brave go-getters like you. And third, here's the reality about getting no's and rejections. When somebody ignores you or says no, they aren't really ignoring you or saying no. They're saying, ah, not right now, but maybe when the time is right. You see, every single time you go through that process, you've planted a seed, and that seed will begin to grow. The people I was rejected by a year ago are now some of my most loyal customers and team members. And you guys know who you are. Hi. <laughs> Had I not talked to those people because I was scared of getting rejected, I probably wouldn't have a successful business, and I probably wouldn't be here making this video for you guys. Facing this fear is crucial to your success. To drive this home, I'm going to leave you with the ultimate example of embracing short-term rejection to get to a long-term goal. If Jesus had come to share his message, but got scared and ran away because of the ultimate rejection he knew he was about to face, what would the world look like nowadays? If you've got a message or a product or something people need in their lives, be bold. Get over your ridiculously irrational fears of rejection and give people your message. If you don't, everybody, including you, will miss out. Hey, really quick, I'm looking. Okay. <laughs> I just thought that was funny and kind of brings home the point of, you know, we all feel this way. It's, it's something you kind of have to just dive in and get into um, and not be afraid of those rejections. And, and I really, I guess, not think of them as rejections <laughs> or objections. Um, because like, like he said, and like we were talking about earlier, um, no doesn't really mean no, it, not no forever. Most of the time they come back around. No just kind of means not right now, you're catching me at a bad time. Or they just don't really know, you know, what it can do for them or how they can fit it into their lives. And so sometimes you just have to figure out why they're saying no um, and help them maybe understand, you know, why it would be good for them. So, for example, let's say, well, you know, if somebody says to you, it has to be like a real objection. Like, do they really not have time or do they really not have money um, to spend on the program? And, you know, again, what happened, what I sometimes do is if, if they say they don't have the money or they, they can't afford it right now, um, you know, I'll say to them, hey, OK, well, you know, the programs go on sale monthly. Um, can I contact you again when, you know, T25 goes on sale if they're interested in that? Um, and then, you know, if they say yes, whatever, I've done that before. Or, you know, I just recently had somebody who said, you know, I don't have the money and, and I, it was a legitimate problem. And, um, 
she was a college student and she didn't have the money to spend on this, but she was really overweight and really wanted to help herself. And so she was sort of like crying out for help, but yet couldn't get helped in this way because she couldn't afford um, the challenge pack. And so, you know, I said to her, Hey, like this, this is like your health, you know, how can I help? What can I do? Um, I, I suggested, and, and I didn't, I didn't know if I was really kind of overstepping my boundaries, but, um, I sort of heard another coach do this, um, in a different way. But anyway, um, I said to her, you know, what, like, what could you put away each month in an envelope? You know, if you wrote whatever. 21 day fix challenge pack or 21 day fix challenge. How much money could you put in a month to save up for it? Like, could you put $10 a month in there? And then, you know, I'll call you back in a few months. And when you've saved enough, let's do this. Let's join. Cause she really wanted to join, but didn't think she could afford it. And so she did that. She said, well, I think I could put more than that, whatever. And so we figured it out. And in three months she called and she was ready to go. So again, like she said no originally, and she didn't really tell me why. And so when I got back to her and I sort of dove in a little bit more, I figured it out and we, we came up with a solution. Um, so finding out why is definitely critical. Um, again, you know, I'll call you back in a few months when it goes on sale. There are different ways with the whole money objection. And, and there are also, you know, is this thing where, um, they call, I think it's called the three F's or feel, felt, found, you know, kind of relate to them in some way. You know, I feel totally what you're saying. I was there, you know, I felt the same way when I started my challenge. I didn't want to spend money on the shake. I've never had a shake before kind of going to your story. Um, but after all that, this is what I found. It has changed my life. My health comes first, you know, um, I was able to put time into this. You know, I get up before my kids go to, you know, get up in the morning or after my kids go to bed. That's when I work out. I found the time. I was able to do it. And I know you can too. Let's work this out. Let's see, like, what's your schedule when you go to work? Um, do you have time in the evening? Like, kind of dive into what their daily schedule is like um, and try to help them figure out a way to fit it in if they, if they feel like you know they don't have time for it a lot of people say I don't have time it's just not the right time um, and you know really I don't know when the right time is to start but you know I kind of go into you know I felt the same way you know this is what I do this is my job you know I have three kids I have a full-time job during the day blah 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 the you know but found the time like it's 30 minutes 30 minutes a day um and the shakeology makes it so much easier you're gonna have to think about a meal you know um so things like that you can you can sort of dive into um i let me just go here i'm i see some if i get off track i just keep talking forever so i gotta go back to my notes here or else i'm just gonna go off on a tangent <laughs> um Again, like if somebody says not the right time, I always say to them, okay, how about can I contact you next month? Because every month I have a new challenge group starting. And, you know, it's always the third week, third Monday of the month. So would next month be better? And yes or no, it, it sort of kind of commits them to like, yes, maybe down the road. Or, you know, what about in the summer? Like, can I give you, can I contact you in June? Um, so sometimes I'll say that if I know, you know, it's just sort of maybe not a completely legitimate excuse, but that they'll do it eventually. Um, if somebody's injured, like I've contacted people and I didn't even know that they were injured. They have an injury or they're recuperating from something. Uh, I say to them, you know, I'm going to put you on my list. They'll tell me when they're whatever, when the doctor is giving them an okay to exercise. And I'll say, Hey, you know, that month, do you care if I contact you and maybe you'll be ready and feeling ready, you know, to exercise again and get back in shape, whatever. And most of the time they say yes. Um, so like often, you know, kind of what the real message is when they're giving us these excuses is, you know, you really haven't shown me enough to justify the objections I'm giving you. You know, like, you know, if they say they don't have time, money. Um, so, you know, kind of spin it around, um, help them figure out why it would benefit them. Um, can you actually show them how it's going to benefit them in the long run? Um, so, you know, and explain the challenge group. Maybe even show them some testimonies of people, you know, that you were in a challenge group with um, before and, and just kind of give some, which I've done as well. 
Um, so again, you can get into that field felt found, you know, when I first started, I didn't have enough money either, blah, blah, blah. You know, those, those sort of things can sort of, um, connect you to them and, and help them understand, you know, where they're going and where they could go. Um, and really the benefit of it. And, you know, I still have, there's still people that still are like, no, 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 can't do it. And, and you just, they do come around eventually, um, as adamant as they may be from the beginning, you know, they're still watching you and they're seeing, and they're seeing your posts and they're, you know, seeing the people around you who are in the, your groups and, um, you've lit a little fire and for sure that they, they may come back around and, um, give it a go. So I guess, you know, it, and I know we have, there are other, you know, just different ways to sort of, um, get around those objections. I don't know, Shannon or Kathleen, do you have anything else to add with this part of it? Um, I don't know if I'm even being clear, but shout it out if you do. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I just, I wrote down a couple of things. I think what you're saying is so helpful. And I think, I think that video you showed was also awesome because I do think about sometimes the number of times my son, Cameron in particular, the baby, hears no, <laughs> and he is unaffected by that word. <laughs> and I think at what point in our lives does it switch yeah. to become this awful, awful word? Because it's not to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mommy, can I watch a movie? No. Mommy, can I watch a movie? No. Mommy, can I watch a movie? I said no. <laughs> and he still keeps at it. It's, he's yeah. unaffected. <laughs> but anyway. Um, <laughs> I think though the other things I was going to say is I think you you were you were hitting on it that sometimes when people say no, um, sometimes it's legitimate. They really can't for one reason or another commit now because of time or money or whatever the objection is. But sometimes it really is that they haven't we haven't shown them the value in it yet. We haven't struck a chord with them about why it's valuable to them. And sometimes it's because they maybe see the value, but they're thinking. I just heard this on another call. They, they maybe see that they don't, they see the value, but they don't believe it will work for them. And so I think sometimes touching on that can be really helpful too, like helping them know that they'll be supported the whole time and whatever. But I have to say when I started, like the beginning things that I was hearing was basically like this idea of somebody says no, then you say, forget it and you move on. And I am um, now kind of very, that, that's not at all what I try and do. When people say no, um, then I try and like, well, tell me more. Tell me what's what's scaring you about it or tell me what didn't appeal to you about it or whatever. Because often, even like when the, as the conversation goes further, even if they still end up being no, you can sort of hear more about like, well, what is it that they don't, you know, maybe they had con confusion. Sometimes I've had people just be totally, uh, like we just didn't communicate very well and they were thinking it's one thing and it's so totally something else. Anyway, so just I would say don't be afraid when somebody says no, it's not a personal offense. Maybe they haven't seen the value. Maybe they're thinking in the back of the mind that it does, it won't work for them or maybe they're just plain confused and they don't know what to, what else to make of it. Um, and then the one other thing I was going to add is that um, Eric Worre, my go-to guy that I've been talking about a bit this week, um, who wrote the GoPro, he said that some people need an average of five exposures to something before they actually commit to it. So some people may just need to hear about it, you know, um, say no one time, say no another time, whatever. And so sometimes I make a little game of it in my head about how many times am I going to need to say something to the same person till they jump on board. So for every person that jumps on board the first time they hear about it, there's going to be somebody else who's going to take 10 exposures <laughs> till they jump on board. So I don't know. So then it, it makes, it takes the pressure off a little bit about the emotional piece. If you're kind of making it more into a little game about, Oh, well that's three exposures. Let's see how many more they're going to need. <laughs> so that's my two cents. Yeah, that's good. I didn't think about, I did have somebody who, um, the communication was wrong and she literally thought that the challenge group was something that met in my basement and that I would be like helping her with her moves and everything. And I was like, no, 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 you do this in your own home. And she was like, Oh, thank God, because I didn't want you to see me work out. Like that was like the thing holding her back. And I couldn't believe that that's what she got from what we were talking about. But so you're right. You never know. Go ahead, Shannon. So I just want to add to that. So I always like when, especially when I first started, like I took it so personally every time somebody said no, it was such a kick in the behind for me every time somebody said no. And um, 
Like when I, when, when people, and everybody always told me those no's are going to turn into yeses, they're going to turn into yeses. And when they started turning into yeses, I was like, oh, okay. You know, um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, objection. Oh, yes. Sometimes like, like um, Kathleen said, like they just don't understand the value or, or they just really don't know enough about the project product and I'll take um, Alicia for example um, she originally said no about Shakeology that she rather you know nourish her body with you know food and I said to her I'm like well I'd rather you you know please just give me the opportunity to tell you about the shake because I feel I, I rather you make an informed decision than based on just what you think the shake is so, and I, I told her, um, I didn't, sh I don't even think I sent you a video at first. I think I just told her my personal experience and, and a little bit about the shake and how it's whole foods and blah, 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 blah. And here she is today. So, um, I didn't just stop at no. Well, for me, it was that second video you sent me that yeah. the way she said it, it like clicked. Like it made yeah, sense it exactly what she said or what it is. Yeah, it was the video from Shay Stanford, the one that tells like how it is whole foods, even though it's like a powder form and how it's broken down. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, but I didn't stop at no. So like I've been actually doing that more. Like I've been trying to find out well, what is, you know, what is there no actually meaning? Yeah, why? Yeah, yeah. you're right. It's, it's still that whole why thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. That was all I had. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. That was a lot. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was a lot of information. It was jam packed. So, um, so Terry's going to do some more posting this week about inviting and objections and all that. And what we'd really like to encourage everybody to do, and I know not everybody's on the call, but what we'd really like to encourage everybody to do is to use this week to start inviting people to the next challenge group, which we're going to start on the 16th. So that's next Monday. Um, a week from tomorrow and we will run it it's not something that you would be expected to run on your own by any means unless you want to and occasionally I have somebody that wants to and that's amazing but um, but this is something that we run together something like I think all of you have been part of challenge groups but um, and we use templates and all that kind of stuff but we just would love for you to start inviting people maybe make a goal for yourselves and um, we can help with that of course Make a goal for how many people you want to invite and aim to get two or three people to join in the challenge group with us. And then we can help construct posts and invites and all that kind of stuff. We'll do that together in the group or you can do that privately with me or your, your personally sponsored coach. But, um, but that's kind of our goal for the week. So if you need to go buy that t-shirt or borrow mine, I'll get, I'll get it to you. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> Uh, but anyway, anybody have anything else? Kathleen, are we having them invite to um, like the the group starting on the sixteenth? Is that the one for every sweat matters? Yeah, you know, I think we'll leave it up to you guys if you want to jump on board. That it's the one for the cause, and so that would be if you wanted to. I'm going to make my um, do a blog post about it tonight, and I'll be posting about that one this week um, a couple of times. Um, so if you want to do that one, that's awesome. Or if as a group, we want to do another one that's not connected to a cause. I'm totally fine with that. Whatever makes sense for everybody is cool. Okay. Terry, did you by any chance create an invite for that yet or no? Anybody? I did not. No. Uh-uh. That's on my tomorrow to-do list. <laughs> yeah, that was on my today to-do list and it didn't happen. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> that was it. Sorry. Awesome. All right, ladies. Well, we're at 10 o'clock here, so we should wrap up for tonight. Yeah. Thanks for getting on. It's so good to see yeah. you. Guys. Thanks, girls. Good night. Have a good night. Right. See ya. Thanks. Good night. Thanks, Bye. Girl.